Alright, what's going on guys? Try back again, here to bring you another video. This one's going to be doing a sort of comparison video, going to be continuing with the kind of differences, comparing the Walking Dead television series to the comic book series. In this one, we're going to be focusing on Morgan Jones, he's kind of been the topic of conversation this week, and we're going to be looking at the comic book series version of Morgan, how he differs from the television series version, and uh, which version I prefer, as well as answering a few of your guys' questions leading into the second half of The Walking Dead Season 6. Okay, so in the comic book series version, this will contain spoilers for the comic book series, not the TV series, because clearly the character is totally different in the television series from what he was in the comic book series. His appearance is even quite a bit different. In the comic book series, he's got like this kind of like afro thing going on here. Here's him with the uh, shovel. This is not, it's not a full afro. It's kind of halfway, you know, and it starts becoming a little longer, but it's not the big poofy one. Uh, <laughs> like that was popular in what, the 70s and 80s? Uh, Jimi Hendrix kind of kind of deal here. So, it, you know, kind of scraggly, that kind of deal. Um, basically, what happens to him in the comic book series is, is very similar to the television series to a certain extent. It starts off at the beginning of the series. We meet him. Rick meets him. And um, basically, it's him and Dwayne, and it goes from there. And we don't see him again until about uh, quite a bit later on in the series, which is um, what we become, Volume 10. So that is the equivalent of near the end of Season 4. Um, there's no clear type thing where in the TV series in Season 3 when they're still at the prison, Rick goes to visit him for firearms. That doesn't happen until after, um, you know, they they leave the prison. Rick's kind of on the road and decides they're sort of in the vicinity of where Morgan, of where King County uh, is. And decides, you know what, let's let's go check on Morgan. It might be worth it. Get some weapons, this kind of deal. And uh, just be just be kind of worth it. Maybe you could get an extra man. And, and you know, it's, uh, it'd be good to check up on him anyway. But they don't have the same kind of relationship, it seems like to me, as uh, the television series Morgan and Rick do with, especially earlier on where they have the walkie-talkie, that kind of deal. Um, that doesn't really, yeah, there's nothing about that. There isn't a whole episode of the meeting. It's very quick. It's very brief. Rick shows up to see him again, and Morgan hits him with a shovel, <laughs> and uh, just like uh, Dwayne did uh, earlier on, and uh, he does the real Rick thing. It's kind of similar to when um, Lenny James, you know, notices him again in, in Clear, and then he says, "Oh God, I'm sorry." Abraham almost kills him in the comic book series version, and um, then we have basically Morgan it realizes it's Rick and allows him in. So what we find out next is that Dwayne is 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 zombified. Um, so in the television series version, you know, you have um, uh, Lenny James's Morgan. We're under the we're still under the interpretation that Dwayne is dead. His wife is is fully dead now, and that uh, that they're gone for good. They're not you know they're not coming back. But in the comic book series version, we get the idea that basically Dwayne, the zombie version of him, Morgan leaves him um, and doesn't kill him. And then when Rick says you know he's it's it's not him. Your your son is dead. You you need to put him. You need to put him down. He's got him chained up, and there's bones. So Rick's kind of asking him like like, what, did you feed? Did you feed Dwayne? And yeah, he did. He he fed him uh, four all men, four men, and a couple of dogs. Um, so people were coming around, and Morgan actually lured them in. It seems like killed them, and then uh, fed them to uh, his zombie son. So pretty brutal. So he's pretty messed up. He's more messed up than the television series version of um, of Morgan. I would say, well, kind of like prior to meeting Eastman, where he he just sees anyone as um, as somebody that he could kill and he doesn't know anybody anymore, this kind of deal. Very, um, you know, just uh, kind of animalistic, very crazy and just angry at the world for how much pain he's gone through losing everything. And um, in the comic book series version, we get the idea that he's he's really feeling sorry for the things that he did and he doesn't know... If he can forgive himself, he doesn't know what he can do because he's killed uh, in order to, to feed his zombie son. And he gives Rick the, the impression that he actually shoots his son down. But what he does instead is he actually shoots the chain that's holding Dwayne and lets him kind of roam free. He just lets him go, basically, as he as he leaves with Carl and um, Rick and Abraham. And um, his son just kind of wanders out. So he leaves his son as a zombie just to wander. And then you have uh, uh, him meeting Carl. And he's got this weird thing. He says, Carl... I'm so happy to finally meet you. And he, like, hugs him. Carl gives him this weird look, like, uh, and then he says, uh, Dad, like, he's not letting go, this kind of thing. And uh, so he, you know, he, he's got some issues. Afterwards, he sees him in the car, and uh, and Morgan is kind of staring at uh, Carl. He's kind of just, like, staring at him. And um, and Carl's like, uh, Dad, <laughs> this is weird. He's just staring at him. Um, 
So he's got some he's got some weird issues. And Carl says to him, "Stop looking at me, <laughs> you crazy old." And then uh, Rick tells him to be nice, that kind of thing, because he's kind of losing it. And uh, and then uh, Morgan says, "No, I, I'm sorry. Uh, I didn't mean to stare. It's just that he uh, he's so much like Dwayne, how he used to be, which I, I guess makes sense. If you would have been alone by yourself in a zombie apocalypse for months and months on end, and uh, you had a zombie son running around, and you just you know finally saw people that were that you weren't trying to feed to your zombie kid, um, you know you might you might." act a little socially uh, in, in, awkward with regards to them. So after that initial kind of part where he comes back into the group, he kind of takes a little bit of a backseat for a while in the comic book series until he's he's there all the way through from about that point to, uh, which would be the, the Hunters with Terminus. He would he would be included in that in, in the comic book series version. Um, and basically he's there with them all the way through up until uh, Alexandria. And this, this is spoilers for the comic book series, but it's not spoilers for the TV series because clearly they're different. In the TV series version, Morgan's already would already be dead based on this storyline. Um, he's brought in at this time, and then what happens is he, he has a relationship with Michonne, and they become... Um, they have a sexual relationship, and basically when No Way Out occurs, which would have been last episode or last few episodes, um, Morgan is actually just bitten by a zombie, and then uh, Michonne basically, um, you know, I think she so she cut off his arm, that kind of thing, and he bleeds out or something of the sort. I'm trying to remember exactly, yeah. Yeah, she amputates his arm. She and Rick move uh, Morgan to Rick's house, and the doctor patches him up. His condition looks grim, and Carl is left to guard him uh, should he die and reanimate. During their time together, Morgan reveals he saw Carl shoot Ben, and he knew that he murdered him. He, uh, But he understood why. Morgan has a heartfelt conversation with Carl and tells him to always remember that he is still a good person. Due to his fever, Morgan confuses Carl with Dwayne. Carl reminds him that Dwayne is dead, and Morgan becomes emotional as he remembers his son's death. Uh, though he should not have lived from the blood loss of the improper amputation, it is unknown if his arm was severed before the infection had spread. Um, and then death killed by the uh, the scavengers indirectly caused. So he would have been killed in the comic book series version already in the first half of season six. He would already be dead. He'd be dead already. So obviously the television series version, a lot different. Morgan is still alive. He's still a core character. He was never really that central in the comic book series. Even when he came back, like it was really cool to see him and see him come back. But after that, you, you meet Gabriel and characters like that. And he takes almost like a back seat for the most part. Uh, I mean, he's in some parts where, you, you know, him and Michelle and that kind of deal. Um, but there's other stuff going on. Like in this one, too, you have uh, Maggie who attempts suicide, which we've never seen, which is a weird uh, one here. Here's Glenn, and he, uh, he he finds Maggie. There's Maggie at the back. We've never seen that part included in the uh, the television series. I guess maybe they decided to scrap it, that kind of thing. So it just didn't fit anywhere, it looks like. Um, yeah, I guess so. So um, that's kind of the comic book series version of Morgan. He's crazier. He's not as relatable. He doesn't have the emotional impact that Lenny James's performance brings to the Morgan in the TV series. He's he's there. He's a good character. He's decent, but he's definitely not on the same level. I would say, at least my, in the viewer's opinion, from the television series version to the comic book series version, the television series version is much, much, much better because you feel more for him, even with all the changes they made recently and kind of confusing him, that kind of thing, and him trying to defend the wolf and the whole Eastman thing. Still better. I would say still, still much, much better. Uh, doesn't allow himself in the comic book series to be with Michonne. Feels like he's uh, he's you know like cheating on you know this kind of thing. His wife and you know it's it's weird for him. So I guess that makes sense too though it would. But it'll be interesting to see if in the television series we ever do see a relationship between Michonne and Morgan. It sure seems like we're not going to so far, but we could see something materialize in the future. And um, he's safe for at least a little while. We know for sure, um, you know, a couple episodes in, don't worry, we're not going to get back to season six and have, see him be killed off at the beginning of No Way Out, and then you're going to yell at me, Trev, you spoiled it because you said in the comic book series that he was killed off at this time. No, he's, he's, he's good for at least a little while. But at the end of the season, maybe not. Maybe he'll be killed off when Negan shows up, or maybe it'll be season seven or eight. I think it'll be a couple seasons. But like I said in the long-term Survivor video, I'd like him to be, but I don't think he's going to be a long-term, long-term survivor so he's already gotten more time in the television series he ever got in the comic book series and i definitely prefer the prefer the tv version of morgan because the comic book series version just kind of seemed a little bit too nutty and just not not like having this stuff together so at least that's my interpretation of it you guys can write your comments below on which character version you liked better and we'll do a few just a couple uh q a questions for today
And uh, by the way, if you guys have any other video suggestions for a comic book series, to TV series, differences, comparisons, things like that, I love to do them. You know, character compare. I love to I love to do these. I love to talk about these and the differences between the comic book series and the TV series. So I did the one special for Christmas. If you missed that, it was posted on the 24th. It's a 40 over 40 minute long video where we go through the entire series up to current date and we talk about most of the difference. I mean, there's so many, but we, we go over a lot of the differences in detail. So check out that video if you missed it around Christmas time. And um, yeah, so any other suggestions you guys have, I love to make these types of videos. They're a lot of fun. So those are my thoughts on that. Right yours below, guys. First question for this uh, Q&A. Alina K says, uh, who do you see surviving the longest in the TV series? Carol, Michonne, or Maggie? So Carol, Michonne, or Maggie? Um, so who's going to make it the longest out of the three of them? You guys can write your comment below too on this one. Uh, I would say probably Maggie, I want to say at this point, because as we mentioned, the suicide thing, they never use that in the TV series, right? Um, they could use it in the future, but she'll probably survive it anyway, even if they do use it. Um, should something happen to Glenn maybe later on, which we don't know for sure if, they're, if, if it will or not. Um, maybe she could try to do that after and then someone could save her. She'll probably make it. So I think Maggie might be. Um, the other reason, too, is because with the TV series, you're dealing with actual you know, uh, cast members. You're not just dealing with a comic book series. They're all, well, the, two of them are still alive in the uh, comic book series version. And, you know, Carol is one where, you know, Melissa McBride is older, that kind of deal. Uh, Lauren Cohen, you know, she, she she's young. She's 33, right? Michonne Denai Greer, she, she's a little bit older than that, I think. I'm not sure her exact age. I don't have uh, memorized or anything because uh, I haven't looked at it recently. But I would say probably out of the three of them, the one that I would think would have the most time should the series go on a long time, like another, you know, 10 years or something, let's say. I think that Lauren Cohen would probably be one that would be a lock. Melissa McBride, though, too, you know, as Carol. I mean, she's uh, she's awesome. And, and Michonne, too, Don I agree. Yeah, and that's, a, that's such a tough question because Michonne is still alive in the comic book series as well, too, uh, as Maggie. And she's uh, really central lately, you know, very, very core central character lately especially. So uh, we'll see if that means something or not. Maybe we can do a predictions for uh, issue 150. But... Um, I would go with Maggie out of those three. But you guys write your comments below. I mean, it's not about who's the favorite. It's about who you think is going to last the longest. It's a favorite competition. Carol will probably win or Michelle would win. Maggie would win. But it's who do you think will survive the longest. Uh, based on age and kind of uh, role, I think it'll probably be Maggie. Carol, you never know because she's not in the comic series. She's safe right now, but we've seen her go badass crazy a few times. And people eventually could get tired of that and they could decide to let her go. Uh, Melissa McBride may get tired of doing it eventually too, maybe after a few more years. She, she's old and stuff, I think. Uh, well, I'm not sure how old she is. She's got the gray, right? <laughs> I just assume she's older. Um, anyway, next one is from Carrington Tucker. And uh, she, Carrington, she or he, well, whatever, uh, I'm not sure, says, Hey, Trev, uh, if Daryl was to die, do you think the show would lose ratings long term? So this is a great question. Uh, and we'll do like one more after this. So long, like, lose ratings long term. Okay. So if they kill him off right away, it'll boost like crazy because people will be like shock factor. Holy shit, they kill off Daryl. I can't believe it. But then after that, um, you know, he is such, Norman Reedus is a powerhouse for the for the crew, right? Because he's somebody who has passion for it, um, always goes to all the cons, always promotes it. He's amazing with fans, even to the chick who bit him. He didn't press charges. <laughs> he's like running around licking people on on uh, you know camera and and, and smooching deny when she's doing an interview and stuff. You seen that? Um, so he's. He's an animal. <laughs> he's, a, he's an animal with regards to uh, the work that he does. He's an, he's an animal, man. So maybe long term it would be actually bad for the show, yeah, because people do like to see him too. Um, as long as they keep, if he reinvents himself, Scott Campbell always talks about the show reinventing itself every eight, eight episodes, every half season. Maybe they need to make Daryl reinvent himself and change it up a little bit. Um, but... You know, uh, do I think it would lose it long term? Maybe a little bit, but it would definitely boost short term, and it would uh, it would keep everybody on their toes for sure. It's like Game of Thrones. You watch Game of Thrones, you don't sit there watching, thinking, "Huh, I wonder." You know, they they would never kill off uh, Tyrion, or they would never kill off, uh, you know, Stannis or this person. 
you watch Game of Thrones, you have no idea, and you feel nervous for everybody, and that's probably something The Walking Dead would like to have as well. Um, but we'll see. I, I hope I'm wrong about the Daryl one. It just seemed like a little bit of foreshadowing to me. Um, but, uh, you know, I mean, it could be Morgan, too. And who knows, right? You know, there's no way to know for sure. No matter how much you think about it, no matter how much you read the comic book series or the TV series, you still don't know. You know, it's like uh, it's like trying to guess what the uh, stock market's going to do next. You don't know if it's going to crash or if it's going to go sky. You never know. There's no way to know, no matter how many years. Even if you become PhD in the subject, you know, you could become, uh, you know, whoever, like Warren Buffett or whatever, and last year he lost like 11 billion or something so no matter how much you know you don't really there's no way to know right there's no way so anyway i'm looking at some stocks and stuff lately uh next one's from michael jacobs and he says uh morgan seems uh like merle to me a seasoned character so he goes quote unquote seasoned character merle came back in season three and got a lot of focus in that season and then was killed right near the end of the season i think the same will happen with morgan in season six he might be the one to get an arrow through the head by Dwight or the one to get his head bashed in by Negan. I think uh, there's going to be two major uh, deaths at the very end of this season. Morgan will be one of those two. So that's a legit prediction, man. That's legit. I like that one, Michael. So I wanted to include that one because I just think it's got some great insight. So he sees Morgan as a Merle-type character where... You know, he was in the series, and they brought him back, brought Merle back season three. We see him near the beginning. He's there for the season, then he's killed off at the end. He's a seasoned character. Noah's a seasoned character. Um, uh, Milton's a seasoned character. Um, you know, Governor's almost like a seasoned character, but then he comes he comes back for season four, right? Um, and just, you know, one of these types of, of actors that are cast for, like, one specific season, and then they're gone. So I like your way of thinking, but I, I hope you're wrong, but um, so it's, it's a legit prediction. And I think it's safe to say if they do kill off someone like Daryl, then they won't need to kill off anybody else. That would be all there would be, and that would be a huge death for seasons and seasons to come. Um but I think you might you're you make a lot of sense when you compare Morgan to Merle. There's a lot of similarities between the two, and I do I I see what you mean where that's that's legit. But I think that they've got the budget now and they've got kind of the idea now, long term, same person, Gimple doing it, so they don't have to worry about one season to one season. I think Lynn Mazzara killed off too many characters too in season three. Like he was death, he was trigger, he was trigger happy. <laughs> he was killing off a lot of characters really fast you know i mean you look at season three the roster is huge of really important main characters that were smoked in season three is crazy so anyway um write your comments below guys let me know what you what you think i really like this last one from michael do you think morgan is a seasoned character um do you think that the show would lose ratings if daryl is uh, is killed killed off and who do you think is going to survive alongside those three as well as the comic book series version to tv series differences for morgan i uh, hope you guys liked the video if you did you know what to do thumb it up below i appreciate it if you wouldn't mind sharing you wouldn't mind favoriting also appreciate that too it also helps it out helps me out and if you're new and you want to sub go ahead and sub at the bottom left that's it for today's i may see you guys again tomorrow as always it's trav saying peace